Evening Cherries fans and welcome to this latest Raw Reaction video following the 2 all draw which we was 2-0 up in against Coventry City. Before I welcome on my special guest, here's a little bit about our sponsors, Dental on the Banks. find out a little bit more about what they can do for you visit dentalonthebanks.co.uk now my special guest today runs his own podcast for coventry city sky blue fans tv it is a pleasure to welcome onto the show mark smith how are you doing mark hi Craig. yeah even yeah you okay yeah, all good. Thanks, Mark. All good. And thank you for joining us on this Raw Reaction video. So, it was a game uh, which looked to be going in our favour until that 68th minute. Let's start from the very start. When you saw the lineups, how confused was you? to how we was going to actually line up because it, it was a bizarre one. I was on your show the other day, um, which I really, really enjoyed. But it was a really strange lineup. Would you agree? Um, yeah, I think from a Bournemouth point of view, I, I, I think whoever you put out was going to be a you know, decent, decent side in fairness. I think, I mean, obviously, the, the, the Philip Billy coming back was obviously a big boost for you. Um, obviously, you, you missed a couple of players with with Kelly injured and, and Gary Cahill, who I think was injured as well. Um, and, and also from our from our point of view, we had a few injuries as well. We had uh, Michael Rose who was off, who was ill the night before the game. Um, Gustavo Hamer uh, picked up an injury as well I think from the Birmingham match. I'm not sure what his situation is. So we weren't, you know, we were playing a couple of players out of position ourselves. We, you know, so I think it's it was. Uh, it was, yeah, I mean, it was a game that, you know, whatever, I mean, Bournemouth, you know, you're doing fantastic well this season. So whatever team you put out was always going to be, it's always going to be a tough match for us. So, you know, at the start of the game, I was I was hoping, um, hoping for a draw. You know, I didn't think we'd get, I didn't think we'd get the win there, but certainly a draw would be a great result. And, you know, delighted at the end with the draw. So. And... When when I saw the lineup, I was completely confused. With um, it looked like we had an abundance of midfielders. When you think about it, we only had two defenders out, which was Mefham and Steve Cook. Steve Cook, who hadn't played all season in the league, Mefham, who hasn't really been on fire, you know, throwing there as well. Yep, Jack Stacey was on the pitch as well. But it was a bizarre one from my point of view. Um, because Jefferson Lerma played at the back um, and he did quite a solid job at the start. Um, what did you make of his first half performance? Because we didn't really give Coventry that many opportunities at the back. No, I, I thought I thought it was a quite a cagey first half um, overall. There wasn't a lot of chances. I think we only had one chance when Matthew Godden uh, missed the cross. He didn't quite get to the ball and he went across the goal. Um, I think the keeper got it. Um, I think I think Weber played a lot into it as well. It wasn't it wasn't easy. I think 
the, the end sort of kicking towards the like where the away fans were sort of first and second half was was tough because the wind you had the winds behind you so I think that played a part. Um, from our point of view, I was disappointed with the first goal because um, unfortunately our keeper didn't really some more didn't we anticipate the ball that well from 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 the shot from Jake Anthony. Um, and I think he may may have been put off by the fact that I think it was Solanke on the far post. He may have thought it might have been cross, and it just curled, curled in. It's a bit slow to react. So I think from a commentary perspective, we were quite happy. You know, if we'd gone in at 0 0 half time, I think we'd have been delighted because I felt like second half, we had the wind, wind on our side. Um, you know, we could, you know, keep it tight, and, you know, we, we, could, have, we could have had a chance of nicking, nicking the wind. But, um, you know, I think. Uh, I think it was just it was fairly it was fairly even first half. I think what Bournemouth do well is press well. You play with a good high press. You don't give us time with the ball. And when Bournemouth do have the ball, uh, they play good football as well. You know the difficult difficult side to get the ball off. So you have to work very very hard for your chances against them. So you know I think one one nil half time at the time I was you know a bit disappointed, but I felt we were still in the game. You know there was there was. There's still a lot of football to be played, so you know, I wasn't unduly concerned, but a little bit disappointed. And then after half time, um, and shortly after half time, we went 2 0 up through Phil B- Billing. Yeah. Um, it was a decent move actually, um, which was a, t- a, t- a toe poke, um, just over the goalkeeper. Um, and did you feel that there was any Coventry players at fault for that? I didn't, didn't see it myself. Uh, I thought the keeper could have done better, personally. That's just my view. Uh, I think the cross comes in, the keeper's got to get up quick from his line and, and try and try and punch the ball away or, or anything, just just to stop Billing from toe poking it in. He just got in front of some more. I think he'd be, he'd be a bit disappointed at that. I think with both goals was, was a little bit disappointing. Um, but, you know, I mean, in, in most uh, situations, when, when you're 2 down away at Bournemouth, it's usually a nailed-on win for the home side. It's going to be very, very hard to get a foothold in the game. And, you know, I'm sure we'll talk about it in a minute, the sending off, but that absolutely changed that game. So, you know, that was, that was, that was a big thing. Well, in fact, actually, it was just two minutes after the billing yeah. goal, um, the sending off. Now, from my perspective, I, I know what I think about the sending off. Um Personally, I think it was a red card, mm-hmm. but I don't think Lerma was completely at fault. Um, how did you see it? Oh, I agree with you. I thought it was an absolute stone stone wall red card. Uh, Matty mm-hmm. Godden was in a great position, bearing down goal. Um, Jefferson Lerma has, has, has tripped him, um, and uh, it was just a straightforward red card. I think. I think that's the first time you've really got caught there open in Bournemouth because up until then you, you were dominating the game really. We 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 didn't really we couldn't get a foothold in the game and you know that incident really really changed the, the match, you know. And uh yeah, I don't understand why Lennon was complaining about the red card though. He seemed seemed like surprised and bewildered by the decision, which I was amazed about because it was a clear it was a clear red card as you'll ever get. Personally, you know, I completely agree. Um he couldn't have no complaints, but my my big thing about the red card, and do tell me if you think differently, Mark, was the pass back, um, which just seemed completely unguided by Jack Sacy. Um, I don't think he really knew where Lerma was. He didn't know where Godden was, um, and it was a very, very poor, sloppy back pass, which... I think Lerma panicked at that point. Did yeah. you feel the same sort of that that yeah. was the biggest fault? Yeah, I think it's just lack of concentration, really. Um, sometimes in, in games like that, you kind of think, well, we've done our job now, we're 2 up. And you sort of get, you just, you, you can make mistakes and it happens. Uh, it was a bit of a poor pass. And to be honest with you, we've, up until then, we've, had, we've really had nothing to offer. We had the odd you know, in the whole game, it's pretty much Bournemouth were, were dominant. Um, it's, it's a game that you should have, you know, on another day would have won maybe 3-4-0, you know. But, uh, 
Yeah, it's just just lack of lack of concentration. But I think I think I mean I, I mean you, you know more than me. But in the last couple of games, Bournemouth have been a, you know a little bit disappointing. Haven't quite been you know as as strong as as you have been throughout the season. So you know I think it's just 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 a lack of concentration. I'd put it down to. Yeah, I completely agree. And after that point, I think we managed to storm for about ten minutes, but Coventry really pressed us hard. And to be fair, I was I was impressed by Coventry throughout the you know whole match. Um, yeah, okay, you did go two 0 down, but I think the way you come back and the manner of how you come back as well was fantastic. Ten men isn't always easy to play against. Would you agree? No. Yeah, no, I totally agree. I think you know, it's, I mean, we've we've played games this season where we were down to ten men. Bristol City at home where we lost. Um, Ian Matson in the first half and Bristol City scored the resulting penalty and we came back twice to win the game. So it, it's not easy, but I think what's what I think going back to this game, I think my criticism of Scott Parker, if I was a one of the Bournemouth fans, I felt he was too negative. He should have, in my opinion, it, you need to keep someone I think Solanke got substituted, I think, from memory. Um but you need you need someone to hold the ball up. You know, you need somebody uh, you know, maybe have nine men behind the ball, leave one up top. You know, if the ball goes to Solanke, his job is just to win fouls, get his body in the way, be strong, try and bring others in the game, and just be a nuisance. And I felt, I thought Scott Parker was very negative in his substitutions. I felt he he was happy just to sit back and sit on the two 0 and I thought that played into our hands, to be honest. Um, so as a as a cough fan, I was absolutely delighted that they'd done that, really, because um, we 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 gained in confidence. You know, and uh, we the belief was there, and that's been that's been the, a massive feature of our season. Is we we don't give up, we don't know when to lose. You know, we never lose as some, as our famous chant goes, and we play with a passion, um, and a spirit, and you know the camaraderie amongst our players is fantastic to see. And of course, Gordon got that goal on the 85th minute, and it was a well taken goal. Um, did you see yourself coming back though, considering there was only five minutes remaining? Um, I thought we were knocking on the door, but yeah, I just I didn't think it was going to happen for us. To be honest, I think um, it's, I'd, be, I'd be disappointed if we'd lost the game, uh, of course, because I felt you know it's one of those games for us. When we got that second goal, if we if we you know if we you know if we never get another five minutes at Bournemouth, I think we could have nicked it, uh, and you know I, I felt confident. Because we believe was very strong, um, but no, I think when the Gordon scored, I thought, yeah, I felt he was there for the taking, definitely. Um, depending on depending on the injury time situation, I mean, Bournemouth obviously tried to kill as much time as possible and waste time, which is understandable because we'd have done the same. So I'm not having a not having a pop or anything like that. It's it's, it's part and parcel of the game. But you know, this that's look. I mean, we've got fantastic fantastic um, work ethic. Mark Robbins is doing a brilliant job, and he's you know the players. Are really, really playing for him, and you can see the way we play, the way the people, the players celebrate. How you know how good you know the, the team spirit and the camaraderie is amongst the group, amongst this group of players. And then, of course, Todd Kane um, really broke our hearts on that ninety um, fifth yeah. minute. Did he mean it? Well, I mean, he got he was interviewed and he said that he did mean it. So I have to take that. I mean, <laughs> He scored, he scored a similar goal as a whole city, actually, like that, uh, from, from an angle. Um, but Todd Kane, for me, is probably, in the last few games, one of our best players. He's crossing... I mean, usually speaking, Frank, Frank Cassie Dabo plays in his position, and, and Dabo is playing on, on the back three on, on Saturday. But Kane, for me, is really, really growing up. Um, um, you know, he's growing up on a lot of the commentary supporters, and, you know, his crossing is fantastic. Um... He seems to get. He seems to create more chances, and he's more dangerous. Um, and that was a great. Yeah, it was a great goal. I think maybe the wind assisted us again. Thank, thanks, thanks to the storm. It's always every cloud a silver lining and all that. So yeah, I think I think Travers may have been. I think he gambled a little bit on the near post. If you look at the goal carefully, I think I think Travers is on the near post, and he's just gone right over his head. He just didn't have a chance. I think if he had maybe been, it's hindsight, a wonderful thing, of course. If he was maybe. Around seven, the goal. He may be able to get his fingertips to it and touch it, you know, push it out for a corner or something, you know. But 
I think, I mean, we were just absolutely, you know, we were so ecstatic as, as supporters. We couldn't believe it. And uh, it gives us a lot of confidence now. Um, I think, I mean, the disappointing thing as a Coventry fan was we didn't get those three points against Birmingham midweek because we really got that, you know, five points from from, from Bournemouth, from Sheffield United away and uh, Birmingham. You know, we'll be, you know, be sitting in third place. But you can't really, can't really complain too much. I'm just, I'm just nitpicking a bit. You know, we, we, we're, absolutely delighted to be where we are in the league and of course you go to um, you're playing West Brom next and of course you've beaten Fulham already 4-1 which was an outstanding performance it was really really good um, and to be fair Coventry blew Fulham away how much hope does it give you that you might be able to get into the Premier League this year well, I think we've got. I think we've got to be careful about talking about that at the moment because it's still we're still not even halfway through the season, um, mm-hmm. and I think it's and the med everyone out on the outside, us fans, the med, the local media, will be talking up our chances. But believe me, Mark Robbins won't be saying that to the players right now. There's still a lot of work to do to get to that that stage. There's a lot of games to play. We've got to play the same teams all over again. We've got three more games, and then it's and it's back to you know playing the same team but twice. So we've got we've got some hard games coming up. West Brom, not in good form. Good time to play them, and I think it's definitely a game we should be targeting three points at the CBS Arena, Huddersfield again, and, and Stoke as well. Neither, neither team are in great form. So, you know, if we can get seven points out of those three games, I think I'll be delighted. And uh, we'll start, you know, the next round of fixtures. You know, we have a lot of confidence. So, lots to play for. Um, let, let's just see where we are around Christmas and just take it every game as it, you know, as it comes. From our perspective, um, of course, we had a fantastic start to this season. Um, we ran away with it for a little while. Um, we was unbeaten for 15 games. Then Preston turned up, as they always do, yeah. at Dean Corp and beat us and the wheels seem to or feel like that they've fallen off is there a little bit of a crisis because of course there's a lot of injuries here at the moment do you how does scott and what should scott parker say to these players because at the moment it feels like there's it feels like history is repeating itself yeah, I think I think you might be referring to last season a little bit where you had a bit of a wobble. Um, I don't think the crisis at Bournemouth, absolutely not. I think um, I, I think you'll be promoted this season with Fulham. I can't see anyone. The, the thing with the Championship is everyone's dropping points left, right, and centre. I mean, I think one thing you've got to be lucky is that you know we're not we haven't won. We've drawn our last three games. West Brom aren't winning games. Um, keep the eye at the moment of losing as we speak to Derby. I think unless I'm, unless I'm mistaken. So, team, teams around the playoffs are dropping points. So, I think from a Bournemouth perspective, I think obviously there's a bit of disappointment with that result. But overall, I think, um, and I spoke with uh, Oggy on BBC uh, CWR, and I also said to him on the radio, I said, Solanke for me is the best striker in the Championship. I think he's, you know, the, the raised a few eyebrows amongst uh, BBC PR because they'll say, well, Mitrovic. But I think with, with Solanke, he's a good team player. I just think with, with from a former perspective Saturday, as I said earlier, I think I think Parker got his tactics wrong. He should have he should have left Slanky up front and hot someone to hold the ball up and just, just try and win fouls and bring the bring the bring your players a bit further up the field. So I think it's I don't think the crisis at all. I mean I think again Philip Billing is a quality player and if you don't get promoted this season, I think him and Slanky will definitely play Premier League for whoever. So I think it's important that Bournemouth get promoted this season. Um, and looking at the division as a whole, yes, there's one or two teams who are hitting form. Um, I think Sheffield United, funny enough, are starting to get a bit of form. And even Derby, despite the fact they're bottom with all the points deductions, are actually one of the form teams in the division. So it's a division that you can't, you can't write any team off. I mean, any team on the pack can, you know, can win if you have an off day. And as, as, as you know from the Preston game, and Preston, they beat us as well. We never seem to, we, we, can't, we cannot buy a win. It's Preston for love nor money. That's, that's just one team, never seems to win. 
against. And I think I think overall the championships are very, very competitive league. There's not a massive gap, in my opinion, between the teams, the playoffs, and the teams even bottom half the table. I think I think it's you know it just goes down to um, just that little bit of quality. And I think with Bournemouth, what you've got is a good you're good in the final third. Uh, Someone the Solanke final third one on one. More times than not, it's going to go in the back of the net, or he, or he, or he, or he supplies it for um, Binning or whoever to finish it off. So, I think Bournemouth have got the quality. Um, I'll be very, very surprised if we don't get promoted this year, to be honest. That's my view. No, thank you so much for coming on this show, Mark. It's been an absolute pleasure. And right. please do give a shout out to Sky Blues Fans TV and tell everybody yeah. how they can find it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we'll do. No problem. Cool. Thank you so much for joining me and a pleasure as always. Yeah, thanks very much, Craig. I appreciate your time. It's good, good to speak to you. And thank you for joining me on this Raw Reaction video. Please remember to hit the like, the subscribe and the bell button below to be alerted to any new videos we do here on Up the Cherries in All Departments. Please do check out our interview with Mark Sefton ahead of the game as well and they do appreciate the game has gone however there's lots of stuff about business the apprentice um and also lots of stuff about personal development in there as well so it's really interesting also do check out our interviews with steve cook steve fletcher effina cuckoo lufa blizzard and many many more as well also do keep in mind that this channel is a fair game channel as well, and we do support the fair game movement. Until the next video, up the cherries, and I'll see you then.